it's Rebecca here from Vene Creations and today we are going to do a tutorial on how to make a huge dream catcher web. Now these are good to put above your bed without tails because you have a shorter wall space. They're good to put above your head because they're shorter basically. Um, and they look just as good because they're big, they have quite a good impact. So all you're going to need today is a hoop. If you want one of the large hoops, I do sell them in my shop. I have all different sizes and all I've done is I've got one of my wooden hoops and I've covered it with my macrame single ply string. Um, you just tie it on the end and you just wrap it round as you're going round. And that's all I've done just to get the base. The next thing you'll need after that is some thick thread. I've got some thread that's used for like leather and things like that. I've just used normal white and then whatever beads you would like to use. You don't have to use beads if you just started out. I'd advise you don't use beads, but today we're going to show you how to use beads. So the first step of any Dreamcatcher web is to tie the thread onto the hoop. Let's tie it on around four or five times. And I do advise you don't do this like I'm doing it stood up because your arms will hurt. You can do it sat down watching a film, that's when I normally do it. Or you can do it on a desk or on a table. So I've probably tied it about five or six times there. So what you can do on this bit is you can get a piece of cardboard. To help do the web spacing I've got a piece of cardboard and I've just cut it to a certain length. And I'm going to go the whole way around the web using the same length. Just makes it a bit easier to make the web really even. If that's the word. So I'm going to find... So firstly I'm going to find where I need to put my thread. And then I'm just going to go around the hoop like this. And then back inside that loop and pull tight. So again, find where you're going and go round. You can kind of get the thread to go in between the yarn, two pieces of yarn and then it fits, it sits really nicely. I always find the first one is the hardest one and then it's just really easy because you're just going in between the different triangles, different segments of the web. I'm thinking of doing selling some of these in the shop without the tails on, so some of the large, this hoop is the 30 inch hoop, this is the largest one that I do. And I only do this one for the dream catcher hoops, I don't do it for the moon catcher hoops. Um, and I'm thinking of doing them just as the web like I'm going to do today. Not with the tails on because they get a bit too long and people can't really fit them above their beds. Unless you own a mansion. Which I don't. So yeah, I'm just going, finding my space. And going through the loop. I do have another tutorial on YouTube that is a lot easier to see, a lot closer up if you want to see how to do this bit. A bit closer. Probably going to time lapse. So now you've come all the way around your hoop, you can get rid of this and start going around the next bit. I find this bit really, really easy. So you just find, you should have a little gap here, not too big, not too small. And then you're just going through this one now. So this is the bit where I find it really, really easy. So we're just gonna go around. So 
through the loop, pull it out, through, pull it out, and through. And again, when you come out of this bit, you just find the next one that's on the top and just keep going through the loops. So I went a bit too far there. I want to stop about here. Where I started is where I'm going to stop. So I've gone round one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times around and now I'm going to stop because I'm going to do the beads now. So what you're going to have to do next is cut. Leave yourself a little bit of length. Oh, I'm going to go around there. Leave yourself a little bit of length. Cut. I'm going to just place that nicely. And then I'm going to put some beads on this now. As many as you want. Just thread them through. And then we'll come back. Now I've put my beads onto my thread. I've tried to keep it like an even amount. So I've done one big and I've done like nine small ones in between and then one big. So I think I've got about 30 or something on there. So now we're going to have to tie this back onto this one. So I just tie it in a normal knot very tightly. So I'll tie it once. Three times. This is why it's important that you get some a thread that's thick, like the leather thread, because you need it to be thin, but you need it to be really strong because you don't want that knot going down on the side. That would not be good. So I've tied it quite probably like eight times there, and I'm just giving a pull. Make sure it's not going to come up when you're done, and it's not. So, make sure you've got it nice and tight. So I've got my beads. So what we're going to do now is the same thing that we were doing before. I might actually cut these ends off first. One moment. One moment. Because don't cut it too close to the thread. Just close enough. So just do it as you were doing before, through here. You don't have to thread the beads evenly at first because you can go back and thread these through afterwards. You can do it that way. I know people that do do it that way. But I like to just get it on there and then do it after. So you're just threading it through as usual. So you can see I've just threaded them through as usual. I don't tend to put them all in the same place because you're just going to get it really gapy. So I try and like put them through a few different ones and then I'll just loosely do the next line of the web. So when you get to here, I'm just going to stick a Stick my thread there, and now I'm going to go round with all of my beads. While it's while it's like this, you can do it at the end when you've threaded it all through, but I think you'd have like uneven web then. So I try and do it after I've done it like that. So you can see that it's a bit loose. So you need to pull that, pull your thread, just so it's a bit tighter. So there I will be spaced out enough for now. I'm going to go around and fa finish the web and then afterwards I'm going to space them even more evenly.
So we're just going to keep going round now. Doesn't matter where the beads lie, you can come back later and space them out. You need to make sure you try your best not to miss any segments because if you do, you have to go all the way back. And I have done that a lot <laughs> in the years. So I think I'm going to do some more beads. I'm going to go back. If you go back, just go the opposite way like I'm doing. And I'm going to do some more beads. So again, I stopped here. And I'm going to do some more beads. So again, cut, give yourself some length and then I'm going to put some more beads on my thread now. Now I've got my next row of beads and what I've done here is I've done like six small ones and then two bigger ones, six small ones and two bigger ones. It's going to make a really nice star effect in the middle. So tie. Give it a pull, that isn't going nowhere. Cut them ends off. There we go. Get your piece of thread tight. So you're just doing it the same as before, don't miss out any segments. Is that the right word, segments? That's what I call them. Is where you've just got to use your brain to see when you need to pull it. When I do pull it, I always pull it when it's at the same place where I've started, if that makes sense, so diagonally. I don't quite think that's ready to pull though. If in doubt, do another one. <laughs> I'd rather do more than less, but don't do too many because you're going to have like a, a baggy web then. That's also not good. And I think when I've gone around this next time, I'm going to pull tight. Pull it tight. Are we ready? Ooh. Magic. I'm just going to cut that off. One sec. Give yourself a bit to play with. Get rid of this. I love this bit. <laughs> Hard work paid off and then just tie it round. The middle. Tie it a few times. You do not want that coming undone yet, coming undone. You okay, Joker? Come here. Oh. Oh. Come on. Come here. Come here. <laughs> 
He's getting old. And now I'm just going to play with this middle bit and just make it even. A little star in the middle. And when you've done that, cut the extra thread off. And there is your finished dream catcher. Beads and all. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks for watching.